Howdy, folks. Joe Howard here. Hope you liked last week's episode of the podcast. We tried something a little new. We have Alan Nimmons on our team who does a WPAMA series on YouTube. And so we thought we'd do a little kind of cross promotion, uh, see if some of the podcast listeners maybe didn't know about the WPAMA show. So we uh, released the audio here on the podcast last week. She did a great episode with Tracy Levesque from Yikes.inc, starting a diverse agency. Really cool listen. I love tuning into Ali's WPAMA series. So feel free to check those out in the future. This week, well, we've got kind of a repeat episode this week. Uh, Happy 2021 to everybody out there. I am now in Mexico. My uh, wife and uh, little son, we all moved down here for the winter. Uh, So we're kind of hanging in our place, enjoying the warm weather. And yeah, haven't had as much time to record as many episodes as I'd like to. Uh, So unfortunately, no new episode this week, but I'm going to re-release one of the most popular episodes we've ever had on the podcast. This episode is about a WordPress plugin that hit 300,000 active installs. Actually, I'll try to make sure I'm correct there uh, in about a year and a half. Uh, This is Banu Alualia, Alualia, sorry Banu if I'm butchering your last name, Uh, but Banu runs Rank Math, relaunched WPBuffs.com about eight months ago now, uh, and we actually switched from uh, using our old SEO plugin to using Rank Math, and it's been really a fantastic change for us. So we're Rank Math users here at WP Buffs, we have purchasers of the Pro plugin that they've recently released, and yeah, it's been Pretty cool to see the growth of uh, Banu's plugin and his team's plugin over the years. So enjoy the listen, and we'll be in your podcast players again next Tuesday. All right, enjoy. Yo, good WordPress people. Welcome back to the WPMRR WordPress podcast. I'm Joe. Hey, I'm Obi-Wan. And you're listening to the WordPress Business Podcast. We've got Obi-Wan on the pod this week. Any uh, background behind why you chose Obi-Wan, big Star Wars fan? I just finished training Rank Math SEO to become an SEO Jedi. Nice. Obi-Wan's always an excellent character selection. So we've got Obi-Wan on the pod with this week, also known as Banu Aluwalia. Did I get that? Oh, that's perfect. Yes, that's <laughs> Banu Aluwalia. <laughs> yeah. There's the, the H in there threw me for a second. But uh, welcome to the podcast. This is actually kind of a long time coming. I remember that we met at Pressnomics this year, right? You were there and we chatted yes. there for a few minutes. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes, we did chat at Pressnomics and we were in contact with each other, I guess, uh, since August 2019. Yeah, and it's been a little while and we've been kind of going back and forth, like trying to get you on the podcast and timing just like hasn't worked out. And then I went on parental leave for three months and I came back and one of the, actually, I'm not even joking about this. One of the first things I did when I came back was like, I got to get Banu on the podcast because we went through this whole thing and it's just like, we got to get him on. This is crazy. So I'm glad you were finally able to make it and actually very good timing for you to be on the podcast, which we'll talk more about in this episode. But tell folks a little bit more about, you know, what you do in the WordPress space. Okay, so I have a couple of companies. One of them is called My Team Shop. And the other one, which is gaining quite attraction lately, is called Rank Math SEO. Uh, so Rank Math is an SEO plugin for WordPress. And within a span of like 1.5 years, we have gained over 300,000 active installations and over 1,000 positive reviews on WordPress.org. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. This is really fun for me when I learn new things on the podcast too. I didn't know that you were also behind my theme shop because I know my theme shop. And so I didn't know, okay, you do my theme shop and you do rank math. So you've got like kind of a two-edged sword there. It's cool. I personally prefer to keep myself like an underdog. I do not (laughs) prefer going public way too many times because that is like me, but the rank math required me to be a public face. So that's why. Gotcha. People have now started relating me with Rank Math. Yeah. Well, I definitely did after we met in uh, at Pressnomics. I kind of knew you as the guy behind uh, Rank Math. And I remember like six months ago, I had heard of Rank Math, but it, it maybe was still kind of gaining a little traction. You know, and then I went on parental leave and I come back and I'm like, whoa, like every everyone seems to be talking about Rank Math. Tell me a little bit about kind of the background to 
even wanting to get started with a plugin that helps folks with SEO on their site when there's obviously most people in the WordPress space know about Yoast SEO as like one of the major plugins. What mm-hmm. like caused you to say like, I know there's this big player out there in that, but like, I think I can compete. Like, how did that whole thing start? Yeah, it was like back in 2015. We also run several niche websites because a background of ours, the founders is like we have been and we still are kind of professional bloggers and we Mm -hmm. hold premium AdSense published account. So oftentimes we ran into issues with the SEO plugins that we had to install tens of different SEO plugins because SEO was evolving way too much. And we realized that all the other SEO plugins in this space, they were kind of uh, restraining us. And they had their own vision. So we developed something for ourselves internally. And we used that plugin for almost 3.5 years. And then we realized that, okay, uh, we have built something good. And it is uh, performing really well for us. Let's try and put it out. And when we released the uh, plugin for for everyone, we were surprised because we were not expecting, to be very honest, to be competing against everyone. But yes, it comes naturally. So I initially emailed Yoast and I respect him for that, that I emailed him and I mentioned this to him that I know that we are entering into uh, your area of expertise and we do not want to do any sort of bad mouthing about you. And we haven't done that and we would never do that because we still respect how Yoast have, has taken the WordPress SEO because that was, I remember my uh, first SEO plugin and we use that ourselves and we relied on that very much and then we launched it and then people kind of liked it because for the simplicity and the kind of tasks which it does and it reflects uh, with the numbers which we have right now that people were in actual need of an SEO plugin. Yeah, it's so cool. I'm also not surprised that building the plugin was kind of, it came from your own needs and some of your clients needs, some of the folks you worked with, you built this thing that just pushed, uh, you know, it did everything you needed it to do. And then you said, well, maybe other people could use this too. You know, you hear a lot of starter stories that are like, I was scratching my own itch. And then it turned out other people needed their itches scratched too. Um, So we released it out. I did not know that about you reaching out to Yoast as well, just as kind of like, hey, virtual handshake, WordPress space is pretty big. We can all be friends without necessarily like always competing against each other. Was that like nervous? Were you nervous at all reaching out? Like, did you what kind of uh, you know response did you expect? Was it like a little nerve wracking for you? And yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. So that's interesting. I was kind of nervous, and I remember the email that I remember the title was something like "Long time fan, but first time mailing you." <laughs> so yeah. it, it was like that, and I was like, "I mean, okay, this is." And I would love to have your feedback, but I can understand he must be busy with something, so he did not get a chance to reply back. But yeah, I wasn't uh, scared. And to be very honest, I never in my wildest dreams thought that we would be getting compared with Yoast, to be very honest. Yeah, I get that. The WordPress kind of care plan and support and maintenance space is is kind of similar. And there's like, I'm pretty friendly with most of the other like owners and people who do the stuff we do. Mm -hmm. And like, we all understand WordPress is 35% of the web. Like we don't have to be competing over each other to like be like, we can all be successful and that's fine. But there's always a little bit of like, it's almost like friendly competition between everybody. And like, that's good. Like that kind of sharpens everybody's sword and everybody gets better. But yeah, launched and like you threw some numbers out there, which were a lot. There's pretty high for a somewhat new, I would, I guess I wouldn't call it a new plugin now, but I mean, 300,000 active downloads within a year and a half and like a thousand reviews. That's pretty solid. What was there, um, when that number was growing, has it been like linear growth and just kind of like regular growth month over month, or has it started to like accelerate and become exponential as time goes on? It turned out to be a snowball effect. When I met you in Pressonomics, we were sitting at somewhere around 60,000, if I if I can recall that well. Oh, wow. And then like in just a few months span, we shot to 100K, 200K, and then 300K. And ha, it has been exploding ever since. So it's like a snowball effect. It started really slow and we were happy about it that, okay, people are appreciating yeah. that. And all of a sudden, I mean, it started growing too big for us and we are happy about it. <laughs> totally. So it's a good problem to have. It, it is a problem to have. You want to keep up and keep moving on things. And sometimes fast moving can be tough, but it's a better problem than probably moving too slowly. True. 
What do you think was the big driver behind a lot of those downloads? Rank Math is a free plugin. I know that Yoast has a good number of users as well. I mean, I think it's one of the most popular plugins in the in the WordPress repository, mm-hmm. and they have a free version. I think most people probably use a free version of Yoast too. But what do you think caused like driving of those new users um, besides just it being a free plugin? One of the key reasons I see there are like two perspectives which I always say. Rank math is like an Apple product until unless uh, like a MacBook, until unless someone does not use it, they do not realize what they have been missing in their life. And if someone is not able to relate to that. So we are uh, those people who do not want to install tens of different plugins just to get over with the on-page SEO stuff of WordPress and want to handle everything via one plugin, which is something and the very basic problem due to which we developed rank math. So that is something people are able to relate. And for the growth, we have seen that people love us so tremendously that they keep on doing the word of mouth marketing for us. We do not, Mm -hmm. we, to be very honest, we have not run single paid advertising. We haven't paid anyone just to, I mean, publish about ourselves or we haven't run any paid ads yet. People are doing mouth marketing for us and they always email us back. Hey, look, I promoted you here. I promoted you there just because I like you and your plugin and things. And we really appreciate that and we feel really grateful about it. Yeah, I totally get that. One area and full transparency. So, you know, folks listening know that we just launched a new website for WP Buffs and we, and it, SEO it, it is looks a, great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We worked really hard on it. SEO is a big part of what we do. A lot of our, most of our website visitors, our leads, our new customers, a lot come via referral and via kind of the WordPress community and space talking about us, but a lot come through organic search. And so when launching the new site, we had a lot of considerations to make for like how, you know, what improvements we want to make, how we're going to manage that whole move and maintain everything. And we used Yoast on the old site. And when we migrated to the new site, when we did everything and moved everything to the new site, we switched over to Rank Math. So you're actually, you know, doing a podcast with a Rank Math user right now. And uh, the one thing that drew me to Rank Math that I was actually like super, super impressed was the the amount of features in uh, this free plugin. Like I was kind of blown away. Were these things that you kind of knew you wanted to build all at the beginning or did they come from like people asking you for certain things and then you were like, oh, let's just build it. No, I mean, uh, first of all, thank you for, I mean, um, migrating to Rank Math. I'm really happy to hear that. All these features, uh, we launched the plugin with all these features. Nothing has been, I mean, like added to the plugin since we launched apart from a couple of Gutenberg blocks. Mm -hmm. So all these things, actually the things which we needed for our projects. That's why they were all integrated into this plugin. That's pretty amazing because I'm looking down this list and like I I keep scrolling on the list and I'm like, it's got to end soon. Like I'm still scrolling. How am I still scrolling? How am I still scrolling? And there's a ton of stuff in this plugin. How how long was it? How long were you building it for yourself and your clients before you released it to the world? It must have been at least like a couple of years or something. 3.5 years. 3.5 years, man. So you've been working on it for a long time for clients and then it had time to kind of get everything in it it needed. The yeah. one thing I thought was... One of the best parts about the plugin is the like schema support, rich snippet stuff, because Google is moving in this way, in this direction of like, you need to not just be ranking number one for your keyword. You need to be manipulating. I I shouldn't say manipulating. That's a, sounds like it has negative connotation. You need to be Mm -hmm. making sure that your, when you show up in search results, that your listing is formatted how you want to. So maybe you want to have some like frequently asked questions as part of your thing. Maybe if you're like a recipe blog or something, you have a picture of your recipe that shows up. Schema markup is part of doing a lot of that. And your schema feature is just like click a button and the schema is activated, which is like totally like, I remember used to having to like ask one of my developers to put some code into the website to like make sure the schema mark was right. But now it's just like, boop, it's on. So that was, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Seriously trying to make SEO easy because it is difficult. We, we understand that being developers and being in so long, we know that things change very swiftly and it become really overwhelming to do all the tasks. So we try and automate as much as we can, but at the same point of time, we, and show that we are not automating the tasks, which we should not be, so that it might hurt the website badly. Yeah, for sure. I'm on the website now, and cool-looking site looks really good. And 
Aside from just all those features that are pretty awesome, I mean, it has a, a pretty easy to follow setup wizard and also kind of like a Yoast mm -hmm. to rank math like migration tool. Is that something you thought of pretty early on to make sure that you made it pretty easy for people to like make that transition? Because that's kind of a scary thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we ourselves uh, moved from rank math, uh, from Yoast to rank math when we initially built uh, this plugin. So it was a need at that time. So we ensured that we were uh, doing the one-to-one -one migration even for the pro version. So even if someone has like Yoast Premium on their website, we import all the data and ensure that everything is ported over to Rank Math correctly. And we yeah. offer the importer for other plugins as well for all the top SEO plugins. That's that's pretty cool. I remember I didn't do the migration myself. Like Nick, who's our COO, handles mm -hmm. handled all that. And he handled the migration from Yoast to Rank Math. And I didn't mm -hmm. do any of it myself, but I do remember Nick coming to me because I told him, like, okay, we're gonna have to like migrate the blog over to the new site. Mm -hmm. We gotta migrate the, you know, all the Yoast information over to Rank Math since we're moving over. And I remember him just coming to me the next day being like, Well, that was easy. I just did it and it worked. And like, you know, sometimes with that kind of stuff, you have to try two or three times, but I think we tried once and it just worked. So that's cool. One thing I wanted to touch on pretty specifically was, and, and before I say this, you've been super mm -hmm. respectful about talking about Yoast this whole time, you know, great plugin, great company. Uh, you know, a lot of people have a lot of respect for them, which they should. It's a great company. This is not at all meant to be a dig or anything like that. But if I've heard a common complaint about the Yoast plugin among people in the WordPress community, it's that the plugin is a little bit heavy. It's not quite, it doesn't quite have the effect on speed of a website and performance that some people might want. On the homepage of your site, it says code optimized for speed. I'd love to hear a little bit more about kind of how you built it with speed in mind and what those who have really, really high performance expectations can expect when using something like Rank Math. Yeah. So the thing was, and it was kind of a benefit and an edge for us that we had a base which we were able to compare. So we were like, I mean, okay, this is how all these other SEO plugins perform. So we have to build something which is faster than these plugins. So we started digging into the code. And to be very honest, I'm not a developer, but I trust my developers uh, with my life. They were like, I mean, okay, Bhanu, what is it which you require? I was like, I mean, all these functions should work, but at the same point of time, this should not be slowing down the backend of the website mm -hmm. because that is something really irks me while I was using, uh, using the other SEO plugin. So I don't want that to happen with Rankman. And because I remember myself that I used to, I still have like the query monitor installed on the live websites where we use it. And every now and then I log into the website and check, oh, okay, if query is optimized or not. If not, I get back to the developers and ask them. So yeah. th th that was the reason that we uh, built uh, for the performance. And that reflects uh, directly in the plugin because every time when someone comes over to us appreciating the plugin, they do mention that the, res uh, the kind of use uh, CPU res uh, usage is very low when using Rank Math compared to other SEO plugins. And yeah, because th that was a problem for us as well. Yeah, I remember... When I was checking out plugin, deciding if I wanted to use it, I remember seeing like some performance comparisons, looking at rank math and being like, wow, like, you know, 8.5 megabytes. And it's just like a, it's a it's a compact and well made plugin, it seemed. And so I was like, we're focused on performance. And I think this was going to be pretty good for us. Yeah, I had a question about like how you're like funding the running of rank math because it's 300,000 installs. I mean, it's a lot of support. It's a lot of probably development mm -hmm. behind the scenes, a lot of supporting of customers, but it's all free, at least for right now. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the pro version that will be coming out soon mm -hmm. uh, here in a second. But how does that work like financially? Because I know you run my theme shop. Are you kind of using my theme shop to like fund some of the progress of rank math? Yeah, that's how it works because I mean, Rank Math is like Rank Math and My Theme Shop are the two companies which are known in the WordPress sphere. We have other companies as well. So we have a good amount of capital with us. So this is getting, we have always bootstrapped all of our businesses. We do not believe in funding because that that is kind of restricting and that does not let you fly as you want to and does not let you make the changes and let you move the with the pace which you, uh, with which you want. So we have the funding from other businesses which is getting into it as, and right now. And uh, to be very honest, we have always tried to keep our team as slim as possible. We do not tend to hire tens of di uh, ten different people to doing a task, which we know a couple of people can handle effectively. We always tend to hire people 
and uh, so that they can work with us for for a longer period of time i remember that there are a few people in our team who joined back in 2012 and are still with us and they they love us like it is actually their company so uh, this is how we are getting funded and we have a team of 22 professionals working together and we are a 100% remote team right from the very beginning yeah Cool. I love hearing more on that side of things too. You kind of sound like you're at a similar place as WP Boss. I think we're like around 20 as well, fully remote. And just your mentality on on mm-hmm. you know, this is not your company is whatever the founder or CEO. This is everyone's company and everybody kind of has a, you know, a part ownership in that. You know, everybody has responsibility and accountability over everything you do and that's that's a cool idea. And I'm a big believer in kind of the bootstrap mentality yeah. as well. You know, maybe for some companies funding is a better option. Totally mm-hmm. right, and everybody is allowed to make their own decisions. But I always liked yeah. not having someone to tell me what to do or myself to make my own mistakes, even if they are mistakes, right? And be responsible for my own successes is always important. Exactly. So, yeah, that is exactly the reason because we do not want someone else to drive and steer where we want to take our companies. We let our customers tell us, okay, this is something because because there are things which got over delayed. For instance, the integration in Gutenberg. we planned to launch that back in march 2019 but we ended up launching that in december 2019 the reason being because we were getting several other requests from our users okay i want this in the plugin i want that in the plugin mm-hmm. and we were like all right i mean these are the pressing needs rather than uh, what we thought that they could uh, benefit from something so actually helps but i believe since i'm just guessing that maybe when you are funded you got to plan a strict guide a strict road map which is definitely not the case with us we tend to move with the flow and integrate the things which are the need of an hour because seo is an ever green ever changing space and it evolves way too quickly yeah that is interesting i think probably when you're a funded company you probably still have some options but i would probably agree with you i would guess that like 9 out of 10 times the decision you make yeah. is the one that's best financially for the business in the short to medium term and when you're your own business owner you can make decisions that are say you know i don't know if this is going to be profitable for the next year but it's the best decision for the long term and a lot of times those are the most important decisions to make for the long term sustainability of a business and so i totally am with you and we're kind of talking a little bit about funding which is also an interesting time to talk a little bit about another plugin in the SEO space um which is all in one SEO plugin which is another plugin that has think you know at least in the millions of users at this point and was recently acquired by the awesome motive team and yeah. i'm sure you've been kind of following that and seeing what's going on there i'd love to hear your thoughts as someone who's in the seo plugin space uh, about like the recent acquisition of all in one um uh, to be very honest i mean we did follow all the seo news around wordpress up until like june uh, 2019 till we were like growing very slowly but ever since we have been growing quickly we started focusing all on ourselves rather than focusing what someone else is doing because we have a road map prepared for the coming two years so we got to get all those things coming out as soon as possible so rather than focusing on someone else if we are tightly focusing on ourselves so yes i did hear the news that said and his team has acquired the plugin and i'm really happy about it. Uh, i met him presonomics and he's he's an awesome guy as well i love the energy which he carries around, uh, with himself uh, with himself so i mean yeah i w- wish them luck to be very honest we are not following any of the plugins right now entirely focusing on ourselves because we have a very tight schedule which we have to follow and we have to get things moving really fast at this point of time Yeah, I love that answer actually. I think a lot of people focus on competitor research and competitor analysis and trying to be better than their competition. And in some situations, maybe, you know, it's a good idea to know the landscape of where you are, but the highest impact thing any business owner can probably do is focus on your customers. What are your customer needs? What are the needs of the people and your focus you know market in the space and like build something and focus on what you're doing that's going to benefit those people almost irregardless of what other folks are doing because if you focus on what other people are doing they could be right they could be wrong like you know you don't really know but yeah. what you do know is the feedback you're getting from your plugin the growth you've seen from your plugin you have everything you need at this point to not have to focus on others in order for you to be successful and i think that's an important lesson for a lot of folks depending on the 
you know, stage of the business where you're at, maybe when you're smaller or just starting out, you want to see what the landscape's like more because that helps to educate you about yeah. the space and know what's going on and what other people have been successful with and maybe not successful with. But once you get rolling, I mean, you use the resources you have mostly probably internally to drive yourself forward. And it sounds like you're pretty focused on that. Yeah, I cannot say that better. I mean, that is what we are doing right. Initially, we did all the uh, competitor an- analysis, but after that, we, we were like, I mean, all right, we are getting enough feedback from our customers and that is where we should be heading towards too. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else that we wanted to talk about? I think one other piece that we can kind of start wrapping up a little bit here, but I definitely want to talk about the pro version and the kind of roadmap to what that looks like. Right now, the plugin is completely free, so people can go to rankmath.com right now and go download the plugin, try it out on the new, on your new site, you know, migration tool if you have Yoast stuff going on or other plugin stuff. People can go try it out for free right now. But in the future, I know you're kind of moving towards, you know, I guess it would be called a freemium model, having the free version, but also a pro version with more stuff. I'd love to hear a rundown of, I guess, what you're allowed to talk about right now or what you feel comfortable talking about. Yeah, we, we do have a plan to launch a pro version and that will be coming in the third quarter this year. And with the launch of that, we will make sure that nothing from the free version will ever get, I mean, is ever removed from the free plugin because that is something not ethical. And initially the idea of, of this SEO plugin wasn't to build a business out of it. It just happened because we were using it internally anyway. So we had to develop, keep on developing it for ourselves. So now people are needing more things and we are seeing that the uh, SEO space is changing way too fast and not, I mean, I'm just guessing that. I guess that not everyone is tapping on the opportunities which are out there uh, with the SEO plugins. So we will be introducing some really advanced features in the uh, pro version, which uh, the tools which we have built for ourselves. I wish I could really share uh, what those are, but (laughs) even uh, sharing the sneak peek would be like way too much information at this point of time. Gotcha. But it sounds like I won't pry too much into the actual details of it, but it sounds like, and people can go on the Mm -hmm. website right now and see all the free features that you have. Sounds like the pro version is going to have some things that go even above and beyond that. Is that, and I know, again, you can't say exactly what the features are. Are these features that you may be able to find in other SEO plugins or are these kind of new ones that people may not have seen before? We personally haven't seen any SEO plugin providing those features and those options. So I'm pretty much sure that no other SEO plugin, at least in the WordPress space, is doing that. And top of it, again, all these tools which we built for us as the internal tools, they were born out of need. So we know what people might require when they reach certain uh, c- certain level with their website. So th- these tools will come in handy. These are the things, these are the advanced, advanced things which people might require and uh, i have like few agency friends they are very helpful and we uh, i always end up discussing things with them and they tell us okay we have uh, we built this we built that and this was something because the client needed something like that we gathered all the ideas and now we have built all the tools along with the tools which we built for ourselves so yes the plugin will provide tremendous value for anyone who is growing with their business for the starters or even the newcomers, the free version does everything one can dream of. They do not need to pay for any premium plugin. But if someone wants to dive in deeper and wants to really extract the technical SEO and the analytical SEO part of their website, uh, we will be targeting those people with our pro version. Yeah, very cool. I know I said the last thing was kind of what I wanted to wrap up on, but I actually found I was I've been looking through the site and I want to mm-hmm. I want to chat about your product hunt launch because product hunt is kind of it's like a you know a tech hub, digital tech hub. But I don't see yeah. a lot of WordPress folks doing launches on product hunt or using product hunt. I've had someone before on the podcast who did a product hunt. I can't for the life of me remember who it was, but I'm checked out your product hunt launch page. I mean. I hear, I see you, you know, with the initial post here as the maker, but I'm seeing like a great video here, like a really cool GIF that's featured, which a lot of people do feature GIFs in product hunt launches. I see like the number five product of the month for March, 2019, almost 2000 upvotes. You have to have some sort of like marketing chops to be able to pull something like this off. Can you talk a little bit more about like the process of going through a product hunt launch? Because I actually don't know a ton about it as a marketer and I'd love to learn a little bit more about to pull this off. Yeah, sure. So we realized that someone submitted our product on Product Hunt. And then 
immediately prepared an email because we have uh, we already have a mailing list from Rank Math. So that that was kind of an edge for us. We emailed them that hey we uh, we got listed on product hunt so if you really like us please consider upvoting on our hunt and see if you can leave a comment and then we did the same with our facebook group users and i believe that was the moment when it started getting traction on product hunt and soon it was featured as the number one product of the day so it lasted for like a few hours there and then we got like few badges if someone is planning to launch on product hunt product hunt which uh, at least from our experience we noticed that we did not get as much traffic as we were expecting but we got a lot of eyeballs and then people people inquired if we would uh, want to be acquired if uh, the plugin is to be sold and we started getting offers from there so i believe that those kind of uh, people sit on product hunt which are looking to acquire different businesses so if someone is looking into that product hunt is the way yeah very cool i think the piece of information i pick out of that is i guess two pieces one is someone posted rank math on product hunt and you kind of took advantage of that to me is a very like you're having a community around you that's engaged in creating a product that creates excitement and engagement is important. And like without that, someone may not have posted it on Product Hunt. The second thing is your email list. As soon as it got posted, you put it out to your email list, you put it out to your Facebook page or Facebook community asking for, you know, maybe an upload of people love the plugin. To have an audience when something happens is a huge advantage because if you have a list of 10,000 15,000, 20,000, even a smaller list, a list of a thousand folks. True. If you can get, you know, a hundred upvotes, like that puts you somewhere and it puts you way farther ahead than people yeah. who don't have an audience at all. So I think that's a really important th- like takeaway that I think listeners should take away is just that the best time to start building an email list and building an audience of people who love your stuff is right now. And then in a year, exactly. maybe when things start rolling, you'll be ready to take advantage of things. That, that's almost like a make your own luck sort of situation. It's like someone posted and you took it and ran with it because you had the resources at your disposal that you'd built over the last, you know, six months, year, three and a half years. Apparently. Yeah. So, I mean, mailing list is something people say emails are dead. <laughs> I do not agree on that. Uh, I definitely do not agree on that. We have an open rate of somewhere around 40% for all of our emails. So we have a very high engaging mailing list. One of the things which we do uh, to optimize our mailing list is that we take out all the people who haven't any email in the past six months we do not send emails to them we call them deadbeats and we try and pitch to them so that our open rate keeps on increasing and email clients like google sees that okay if they are mailing to their customers their mails are getting open so they should not be sent into the promotions tab or the spam folder yeah i mean another Great tip. I think a lot of people having a big email list is kind of like a vanity metric, right? It's like, I have a list of like 50,000 and it's like, wow, that's amazing is what most people starting off think. But once you've built a list that big, you realize it's all about engagement and the list of your size, whether it's 15,000 or 50,000, like the difference is the engagement because the point of a list is to have an engaged audience Mm -hmm. and to, you know, generate revenue for your business at some point. And if you're not doing that, then who cares how big your list is? But what really moves your list forward is the things like high open rate and high engagement, because those are good indicators for everything else that you're doing. And to think I want to send this email out to more email addresses is it's counterintuitive because it seems like the right thing to do, but you get to this point where you do realize I'd much rather send it out to a hundred people and have 50 of them open it than send it out to 500 people and have 10 of them open it. So I think that's a smart idea. Do you kind of go through manually and clean out lists or do you kind of have like a automation in whatever email software you're using that kind of says, if this person hasn't opened an email in six months, just unsubscribe them. It is all automated. We are using campaign monitor for sending out emails. They are definitely not cheap, but their deliverability and, and the kind of segmentation which they provide is really good. Again, from our previous businesses, we ensured that whatever we learned, whatever failures we made, whatever mistakes we did there, we did not repeat them. We Obviously, we made I mean, new mistakes, new problems came in with Rank Math, but we were very much sure that whatever we learned from our previous businesses, so we did not repeat that. And at the end of the day, we provide like high value to our uh, users. So once in a while, if we ask them for a favor, they are more than happy to give back to us. 
Yeah, that is a, that's a great point to end on, probably. You're allowed to ask your email subscribers and your list, or your audience, you're allowed to ask them for things. They subscribe to you for a reason, but make sure that, you know, one out of 10 times you're asking them for something, the other nine out of 10 times you're giving them free stuff, yeah. you're giving them, you're adding value to them, you're helping them improve their businesses. So when it comes time to asking for something, they're like, huh, this guy helped me the last nine times. Like, yeah, easy decision to, to help them out on this one. Uh, it's how you get 2,000 upvotes on Product Hunt, I think. So, Cool. Yeah. Bonnie, thanks for being on. This has been an awesome convo. I'm really excited about Rank Math and the direction it's going. We got to talk about other cool stuff too, more marketing side of things, just more my area of expertise. So it's cool to hear about product hunt launches and strategies you're using to grow your email list and to trim it back when needed, things like that. Do we want to... Yeah, thank- yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I, I, I'm really thankful for having this. It finally happened. I'm really happy. As a person, when I met you at Pressonomics, you have like one of the most positive vibes coming out from a person. And I really <laughs> like being around you. And w- w- when I was seeing talking to other people, never for a second, I felt it that I was meeting you for the first time. And uh, that is like one of the sweetest uh, things which you have. You're going to make me blush, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, it's uh, The WordPress community is so open and welcoming. It feels like most people I meet are like pretty friendly. I thought the same thing about you, man. So we'll have to, we're going to have to keep in touch and stay friends. Definitely. Tell tell folks, as we finish up today, where can they find you online? Some people are like more on social. Some people are not as much. If someone wanted to check out Rank Math or you, where should they go? Uh, For Rank Math, they can visit our website, rankmath.com. And we also have a Facebook group. But if someone wants to connect with me personally, I'm not much of a social person on any social media platform other than Facebook. So you can definitely email me uh, at bhanu.a at rankmath.com and I'll be more than happy to reply back to you personally. Yeah, very cool. Last thing, I always ask our guests to ask our audience for a little five-star review on iTunes for the show. So if you wouldn't mind asking the folks listening, I'd appreciate it. Definitely. I mean, if anyone's listening and if they have enjoyed what, um, I mean, the kind of conversation which we had today, please go ahead and click on the five-star review on iTunes. It takes like a couple of minutes to you, but it helps tremendously for all the efforts and the uh, guys like Joe put in. So also I'll be sharing this with my uh, with our audience as well, because they would love to hear uh, these and this whole, uh, whole conversation. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Very cool. WPMRR.com forward slash iTunes redirects you right there. Uh, if you leave a review after the show, tell us something you learned in the review, something that you thought was awesome in this show. Uh, that way we can forward it to Banu and thank him for the uh, little review. If you're a new listener to the show, now is a time where everyone's binging all sorts of TV and shows and movies. Why not binge something that'll help you grow your business? Check out some older episodes of the WPMRR podcast. We've got almost like 100 episodes now. So whatever topic you're having a challenge with right now, do a search on the podcast page and you'll be able to find something that, that uh, is relevant to you. If you have questions for us on the show, Christy and I like to do Q&A episodes and we need to do more of them. We've been slacking a little bit. I'm not going to lie. We've been slacking a little bit on Q&A episodes, but we want to do some more. So if you have questions for us, shoot them to yo at WPMRR.com. We'll get them answered here live on the show. Other than that, I think we are good to go. Uh, we'll be in your podcast player again next Tuesday. Uh, Bonnie, thanks again for being on, man. It's been real. Thanks to you for inviting me. It was great talking to you, man.